Okay, so our next uh, discussion is going to be our uh, survivorship discussion here to present the information uh, is Lynn McNally and Sandra Olvera. Uh, they're both highly trained nurse practitioners uh, from Banner MD Anderson's James Cox Foundation Center for Cancer Prevention and Integrative Oncology. Their care includes complementary therapies that support the whole body and, and mind as patients are going uh, through uh, cancer treatments. Uh, the program helps treat the whole person and not just parts of it. So we'll turn it over to them for, uh, for their discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gimbal. Thank you to the symposium for allowing uh, myself and Lynn to present to this program. This is a great honor. Um, and thank you to our fellow presenters. I'm gonna go right into um, our presentation and share my screen and my slides with the audience. And my name is Sandra Olvera, I'm a nurse practitioner in integrative oncology and cancer survivorship. And Lynn and I will be presenting our program on survivorship and how to thrive with cancer. I'm gonna delve right into what a cancer survivor is. And the definition is anyone with cancer. So from the time you're diagnosed, through your treatment, and through the remaining years of life. We can subcategorize a survivor into three different categories. That may be someone living with cancer uh, um, at the time of surgery, through maybe your treatments uh, for melanoma, immunotherapy, or uh, targeted therapy, perhaps you're going through radiation, or maybe you're even enrolled in a clinical trial. Uh, another category could be living through cancer. So now you are going through maintenance therapy. Your active treatment is completed. You're maybe undergoing surveillance with your oncologist, or perhaps you're going through rehabilitation with uh, occupational or even physical therapy. And then there's also living beyond cancer. So we're talking about the time period post-treatment looking in the long term and talking about this new normal for, for your life. Um, what does this mean beyond uh, the diagnosis and for the years to come? Um, presenting this slide to just give you some numbers. Uh, the numbers of cancer survivors in this country has increased astronomically. Uh, and when the reason we, we have that happening is because the trends in the five-year relative survival rates has only increased over the last 40 years. Um, for melanoma, the numbers have always been good, but again, the numbers are always improving as well. And we can credit this to the improvements in treatments um, and early detection. And the, the thing we're still battling though is the fact that cancer is still the second leading cause of death in this country. Uh, melanoma ranks fifth for both genders, but the numbers are still great. So since we have an overall improvement in the cancer death rate, it's, felt, it's fallen by 26% between 1991 and 2015. Now we have a huge number of cancer survivors and the estimate was about 15 and a half survivors in this country around 2016 with the numbers only increasing um, by 2026 to over 20 million cancer survivors. So why is survivorship important? Um, it's because of these large number of cancer survivors that are, are around and dealing with their, um, their life or this new normal. Um, and it's also the importance of why cancer survivors are, are having to implement survivorship programs because of the needs that cancer survivors have. And it's not just immediately during their diagnosis and treatment, but really for the years beyond and having to deal with um, this uh, part of their new medical history and, and what does this mean for them and their families. When we meet with cancer survivors, uh, there's usually five categories of hardships that we discuss with them or they bring up and, and want to discuss with us. Uh, Dr. Zabo has mentioned some of these in her presentation, but most commonly we deal with physical hardships. Usually it's uh, issues with pain or fatigue, uh, maybe some side effects related to their treatment or even through their surgery. Psychosocial, um, again, anxiety and depression seems to be the ones at the forefront that cancer survivors deal with. Uh, over the past year, we've just seen an increase of anxiety or, or um, worries that patients have, not just because of you know, the fear of a cancer occurrence, but also the fear of COVID and what their risks might have been uh, going through treatment or being a cancer survivor. 
I've also heard of financial uh, hardships that patients go through and even, you know, maybe years after their diagnosis, the cost of treatment, the cost of medication, the cost of imaging studies, and maybe even uh, the financial hardship they have to deal with if they've had to give up their occupation or their career and the burden it may leave on not just themselves, but also on their families. Patients sometimes will also discuss uh, their legal hardships, uh, having discussions with their families about maybe an advanced directive or uh, drafting a will, or maybe even assigning a medical mem uh, family member to be their medical power of attorney. These are very tough discussions to have, but are necessary for someone who may be dealing with cancer. And then lastly, spiritual, spiritual uh, um, a hardship for patients may be their faith has been tested through their cancer journey. They're having to deal with um, their feelings of maybe the existence of a higher power or how faith is important to them. But also I've had patients who felt that going through cancer made their, their faith even stronger than ever. And their faith in a higher power um, is more than they had ever felt before. We like to break down survivorship care under four elements. Uh, first, surveillance. We wanna make sure that we are um, up to date in monitoring patients for any cancer spread or recurrence or any new cancers. We also wanna assess any medical and psychosocial late effects. We wanna coordinate not just with your oncology team, your oncologist or your dermatologist, but also your primary care provider, uh, making sure they know what your treatment has consisted of and where you are at in terms of your survivorship. We also involve an intervention, making sure we're uh, assessing for new side effects related to your treatment um, and making sure we put you in connection with the right resources. And then also prevention, which is really the, the basis of our survivorship program. We wanna help prevent any type of recurrence um, and then also uh, treat any type of late effects related to your treatment. And then also making sure that um, if anything new were to come up, any sign or symptom of any new cancer or a cancer recurrence that we immediately assess that and put you in connection with either your surgeon or your oncologist. We're happy to provide two types of cancer, uh, I'm sorry, melanoma survivorship uh, appointments at our center. Um, there's two types, the first being a survivorship consult. This particular type of visit occurs after the completion of your active treatment. It could be several years after your diagnosis. The visit is ordered by your oncology team. And what the visit consists of is a physical exam uh, by myself or, or Lynn to evaluate for any signs or symptoms, um, maybe any new side effects related to your treatments. We also will be ordering any surveillance testing that's indicated by your oncologist or your surgeon. And um, also we are again, focusing on prevention. So perhaps there's other preventative testing that you might be needing, perhaps a dermatology uh, visit, a skin check, or maybe even a colonoscopy. Maybe it's time for, for you to do that, but you don't have a, a GI doctor at this time. We can help arrange that for you uh, through our cancer center. The second type of visit is our survivorship care plan. And the care plan is a little different in that we are seeing patients who have been diagnosed within one year up to about 18 months from their diagnosis. Again, this visit is ordered by the oncology team and myself and Lynn um, are available to sit down with the patient and develop a treatment plan summary. Um, it's integrated within the um, electronic medical record, and it provides a full summary of all of your treatment so far. So if you've had surgery or radiation or immunotherapy, we go ahead and document that within your record. Um, and then also we want to document um, any late and long-term side effects you may be having related to your treatments. Uh, we are currently being able to conduct these survivorship care plan visits through telehealth. I'm now gonna pass the baton to uh, my co-presenter, Lynn McNally, who's gonna go through some more components of our survivorship program. 
Thank you, Sandy. Yes. Um, so this is the algorithm that we developed over at Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center about when patients will transition from their melanoma team into our survivorship program. Um, it varies uh, depending on the stage that they are at diagnosis with earlier stage um, melanoma cases being referred over at a um, sooner interval. They must be no evidence of disease. Um, if stage zero, they come as early as six months, whereas stage three to four, they will not come to our program until after five years. And then depending on the stage of diagnosis as well, we'll determine what we do at each of those appointments. Every year we'll do a history and physical exam, um, making sure that there's any uh, new skin lesions are being uh, evaluated, see if they're having any signs or symptoms of reoccurrence. And then if they're a later stage like 1B and up, then we will order imaging studies, uh, CT scans or MRIs um, based on symptoms. And then we always encourage the patient to continue to follow up with their dermatologist as well. So they will be getting frequent um, skin checks from them. Um, next slide, Sandy, please. Every visit we will evaluate for any long or late term effects from their cancer treatment. And this can vary depending on the type of treatment that they had. Um, some patients will have lymphedema, especially if they've had a lot of lymph nodes removed. They may have uh, difficulty with range of motion from the uh, extremity as well. They may have numbness and tingling at their in uh, surgery site. They may have uh, scars as well um, or stiffness. And uh, depending on um, if they had immunotherapy, they may have um, various autoimmune adverse events, uh, such as problems with their heart or thyroid. Um, we always say that it's important for patients that have had um, melanoma to make sure they tell all their providers about their type of cancer that they had and what treatment that they received. And this is why it's important for them to get the survivorship care plan at the end of their visit, because they can give this to any of their new providers and they can see exactly what type of treatments they had. Next slide, please. And just because someone had melanoma, you could still be at risk for developing new cancers or reoccurrence of your melanoma or a new melanoma. Um, we always assess um, at each visit to make sure that patients are getting their general cancer screening recommendations um, per the American Cancer Society. We wanna make sure if they're a man, they're getting their PSA. Woman, they're, we wanna make sure they're getting their pap smears. We wanna make sure they're getting mammograms and colonoscopies, and of course, um, their skin checks. Next slide, please. And uh, we also always talk about cancer prevention. Uh, we wanna make sure that we decrease the likelihood um, of their cancer returning from their lifestyle choices. For melanoma, uh, as, as Mary talked about earlier, we wanna make sure they're using a SPF sunscreen of at least 30 or above. We wanna make sure that uh, people are abstaining from using tanning beds or being out in the sun, especially during the high peak hours between 10 to two, even 10 to four, um, especially in Arizona where we live. We wanna make sure that people are covering up their skin, using hats, using uh, UVA and UVB protected lenses for their um, sunglasses. And then when we talk about lifestyle um, choices as well, we talk about diet, exercise, sleep, stress management, and uh, tobacco and alcohol um, abstinence as well, or limiting alcohol to one to two drinks a day. One drink if you're a woman, two drinks if you're a man per day. Um, next slide. At our cancer center, uh, we do, it, within our clinic, we do do integrative oncology consultations as well. If a patient is having serious side effects from their treatment, we will make a referral to see one of our integrative um, providers as well. Uh, we do offer uh, uh, acupuncture in our, in our facility. If they're having a lot of anxiety, we may refer to um, the health psychologist. If they have um, obesity or um, dietary issues, we have a free wellness dietitian that they can meet with. We used to offer massage therapy that's on hold right now due to COVID. Um, we do have a tobacco cessation program as well that uh, we will refer anyone who's using any nicotine products to. And then uh, we do complimentary wellness classes. Um, they've been on hold due to COVID, but we will be starting those up soon. And next slide. And these are our, our providers here. We have, uh, if you have any questions, just let us know. We can talk about it at the end.